Hello, my name is Professor Greg Pasternak, and this is the video podcast to introduce Hydrological Processes in Ecosystems, HYD 143, at the University of California at Davis. You're probably taking this class because, like me, you have an interest in understanding how the environment functions and how human civilization has affected the environment, and we certainly know that it has. You're aware that the presence of liquid water distinguishes Earth from other rocky planets in our solar system and is the key to life as we know it. And so therefore, we really need to understand how that water works in the environment. For example, groundwater overdraft and contamination, farmland topsoil erosion, flooding, droughts, impacts of logging, wetland conversion. These are examples of present day conflicts that exist between humans and nature for the use of water. You probably recognize that there's also a need to balance water use to prevent exhaustion of natural resources, which is a problem that some areas of the world have experienced throughout human history. There's a growing awareness of the fundamental role of water in the environment and the scope and critical nature of water problems worldwide, and this has led to a broader, more congruent call for hydrologic research and training of future leaders, of which I hope you're one. You're going to have to be able to move comfortably between traditional different disciplines, you know, ecology and hydrology, but not only those, looking at chemistry, physics, biology, and mathematics. In order to solve environmental problems, we have to take a problem-oriented approach that works across those boundaries. And my hope is that this course will introduce you to how that gets done. In terms of prerequisites for this course, there may be some that are written into the course catalog, but in general, I don't require any prior knowledge with respect to hydrology and ecology. The central goal of this class, though, is to teach you how hydrologic analysis is done in a very practical way, but grounded on the fundamental principles of hydrology and ecology, so that you can assess environmental conditions by exploring hydrological processes. And we're going to do that first by looking at individual ecosystems and how they function. And then we're going to take that into a holistic landscape context and see how the different patches in the landscape all function together as best as we can represent those. So some students who are taking this class are probably majoring in hydrology, civil engineering, or geology, and already have some idea of the kinds of things that we're going to talk about. Other students may be in environmental science and management, or some sort of biological sciences, or, or perhaps even policy. Um, and then still others might have no experience um, yet related to hydrology or environmental science. That's all okay. The main thing is that you really need to have some introduction to the basic sciences and how to think as a scientist. You may not be very good at putting that into practice yet. That's what this class is all for but you should at least have some exposure to that. And also, you should be comfortable um, as a starting point with the idea of doing computations and using math to answer real-world problems. I'll show you the specific tools that we're going to use in this class. Um, you just have to be comfortable with the idea that we are going to use math to uh, tackle hydrology. And we're going to blend the ideas that underlie hydrology and ecology with the practical skills that you need to function as a professional environmental scientist. So in summary, this class is an introduction to basic eco-hydrological concepts and methods, and it's intended to give you professional skills that you're going to use in your career. And that's one of the things that people always say that they like about this class, is that it does give them things that they will use on the job. Now, I'm doing something different in this class from what many of you have experienced. For many students, education from elementary school through high school and even into college is primarily an activity in which you sit and listen to a professor talking at you, kind of like you're doing right now, I suppose. However, research has shown that this isn't the best way for you to learn if it's the primary or only learning exercise. Even if you supplement a lecture-based approach with homework, um, you run into the problem that homework done by yourself um, provides you with no guidance or interaction. And in fact, in professional life, you often are interacting with others. 
Sometimes you do literally have to go off uh, at your own desk into a closet and solve a problem. You have to have the individual confidence that you can do that. But at the same time, you need to be able to um, draw the answers from available resources and work with others um, either on a team or in some form of collaboration. So in this class, I'm going to take a learning-centered approach. And what that means is that I'm going to ask you as the student to take the lead as being responsible for your own education in this class. And that's a hard thing to do, but really, most of the time I spend in mentoring undergraduates in my lab or graduate students is in fact all about breaking students of the bad habits that they've learned in education and uh, as uh, through K through 12 and in, in college and teaching them how to learn for themselves and have the primacy of their own responsibility in learning. Now, that doesn't mean that I want to leave you on your own. I'm going to provide you with a huge array of resources and opportunities that you can then take advantage of. And there's four broad things that I'm going to provide you with. First, you're going to get an array of information resources. Second, I'm going to give you the chance to take initiative and find additional resources. If you want to learn something in more detail than I present, then I'm going to encourage you and show you how you can do that. Next, I'm going to have you interact frequently. In fact, we're going to spend almost all of our class time interacting with other students and with me. So you're going to get a lot of activity. Sometimes we'll be doing that in class. Sometimes I may be challenging you to run around outside and do things um, you know, in the rain. And then finally, I'm going to be here every step of the way to help guide you and use my abilities as a professional teacher and researcher in hydrology to help give you the best education I can. The resources that I'm going to provide you with to succeed in this class consist of five elements. First, there's going to be a series of sequential streaming video podcasts of lectures, and this is the first one of those. In addition, you're going to get a PDF with the lecture slides, and that's available through SmartSight. And I'm going to set the expectation that you're capable of watching these video podcasts on your own. Feel free to start and stop them you know, whenever you want. Take it at whatever pace is meaningful. I don't recommend that you start every two or three minutes and pause and do text messaging and everything else. Um, it's best if you're in a quiet space where you can really absorb the lecture. Um, but the main thing is you don't need me in person in life to walk you through this information. I've done that many years and I don't know that it's any better. And In fact, I'm hearing from students that these video podcasts are better than having to sit through the in-class lectures. Secondly, there's a really good textbook for this class that has a lot of depth and um, provides a different perspective on the topics that we're going to cover compared to what I provide. So the textbook will give you more case studies, more um, applications, and then spin-off ideas. There's also a supplemental course reader because there's some topics that the primary textbook doesn't address or perhaps not optimally, and so I ask you to um, get those additional readings. Next, there is a content-rich course website. I've completely overhauled the website, um, and so now there's just a wealth of information that's there, and I'll continue to build that out. That provides you with 24-hour, 7-day-a-week access to course resources. Finally, I'm using UC Davis's um, based uh, smart site system, which provides overall course management and communication tools so we can interact. And of course, you're always welcome to email me or you know, talk to me about anything that comes up. In terms of the activities that you're going to do in this class, there's four types of activities. The first is that I'm going to be deploying an online student response system. It's asynchronous in that everyone can get to it on their own time, but what it's going to do is while you're watching the lecture or after you watch a lecture, you can answer questions that are going to then aggregate across the class so I can see how everyone's doing in their ability to take in the information from the lectures. Um, it's also going to give you a chance to see how well you're performing and uh, learning about those uh, materials. Those are not graded questions, those are just informational. Um, second, I'm going to give you a problem or task every single class. We're going to do something. And this is going to be the, your opportunity to gain the technical skills you need to function um, as a professional who has hydrology in their toolkit. Um, and it's going to really help you to grow confident in your skills and understanding the concepts in the class. 
by working on the concepts in class, I'm there when you need me to help you get unstuck. I'm not going to be there as a crutch. If you're doing fine, don't ask me to you know, do the work for you. Don't ask the other students to do that. Um, you know, work on your own or work with one or two other people. Um, a lot of the work we're going to do is going to involve spreadsheets, but some will involve computer simulations or other forms of data analysis. Um, or you, know, you might choose to write programs or scripts or other ways of working with the data. Pretty much you're on your own to pick the things that work best for you. I'll show you some things, but there's going to be a variety of tools you can draw from. Next, there will be periodic small group activities. These activities are designed to help you to digest blocks of information. After we go through, say, you know, four to six lectures and we've covered a topic like hydrology and forests, we want to digest that. And the approach is that I'm going to ask you to work in groups of, you know, perhaps four to design scientific experiments using the scientific method um, to solve a problem related to the information that you've digested in that block of information. And then I want to ask you as a group to make an oral presentation and also to communicate um, your ideas in a small written proposal. So developing oral and written communication skills and doing that in a group context is essential to practicing as a professional environmental scientist. And then finally, um, all classes um, at UC Davis are required to have examinations, uh, it's my understanding anyway. And of course this class has three. And so those will provide an opportunity to evaluate each student's progress in the course towards gaining the scientific literacy in the course materials. So by now you've probably noticed that I can talk pretty fast, and that's another good reason to have a video podcast. So then you can say, whoa, I missed that, so I'm going to just slow down and hit rewind and listen to it again. Um, okay, so now we've come to the part of this where we're going to start to look at specific content. So what is HYD 143 going to cover? Um, the syllabus for the course is on the course website. If you just go to pasternak.ucdavis.edu, then you can find the full syllabus there. Um, but this also is a presentation of the syllabus. So the course is divided into different blocks. The first block relates to forest ecohydrology, and there's going to be four video podcasts and associated assignments, and then one um, work group activity associated with that. Then we move into cleared lands and urban areas. Then we shift over to wetlands and floods and floodplains. And at that point, we've gone through all the different landscape contexts and hydrological regime signatures that we're going to cover. And then we're going to move to a landscape scale perspective. We want to look to see how hydrology tackles a whole watershed, um, how we represent watersheds at different spatial scales, and then how we use hydrological and related uh, analyses to assess a variety of watershed functions, might be you know, sediment, might be landslides, or perhaps river related. And then finally, we're going to switch to ecologically oriented perspectives. How is hydrology represented in ecological models, if at all? Um, and then how do we put both hydrology and ecology together into what we might call landscape models? And finally, I'm going to present um, a little bit of a shifting gears, the concept of ecohydraulics, which is essentially looking at ecological, hydrological, and even geomorphic linkages in the aquatic environment, particularly freshwater rivers. So that's the overview of the class, and I'm going to stop this podcast here, and then I'm going to continue on with an introduction to ecology and hydrology. So um, that'll be in a separate podcast.